Hello, welcome back. So, if we can get through this part without going to war with someone, um, I'm going to be quite amazed. I think it's pretty much inevitable at this point we're going to go to war with Byzantium. And after that, it kind of depends on the tech tree situation. If we can get to navigation around the same time as Poland, I would at least be tempted to consider going to war with them too, because they're a big threat. Also, they're really annoying me with where they're settling their cities. Um, and I would like to take this town over, because if we do go to war with Byzantium, uh, we're definitely going to keep Constantinople. That's easily one of the best cities on the map. Um, but I'd be pretty tempted just to raise this and maybe develop this town instead. That's very much a long-term look, and we might not end up doing that. But in the short term, we're in serious need of iron, and Attila currently has the only iron on the map. That's actually free, that is. So we're going to pay him for that. And we're going to take this opportunity to upgrade our warrior. Try and get him all the way to Janissary. And it's unfortunate because we do have a second warrior here, which I would also like to upgrade. And I'm not sure we can really do that because Long Swordsman is also going to require iron. And then by the time we can actually upgrade this guy, we're going to need to have upgraded this swordsman here all the way into Janissary, and then it's going to take like three or four more turns to upgrade this guy all the way. Plus I'm assuming we'll still have enough gold, but realistically, uh, we actually might not. I'm not sure. We'll see how it goes. But we're going to start slowly moving these units over towards Eden. But we need to be a little bit careful because if we get too close to Theodora, she's going to suspect that something's up. So let's take it fairly slow. Who's this guy? Ah. Okay, so we haven't got too much to be doing with our workers now. There is still one little spot here we can work on, or we can just work on this jungle instead. The Gallius we're going to send over to Eden, and this guy we're just going to put on the shore. And then over here, I'm not really sure what to do. I'm pretty tempted to go for another cargo ship, because we do currently have two spare slots, but... The way it tends to work in this game, if you're planning to go to war, you really should go all in. So I should perhaps be going for probably another Gallius. After all, we pay almost no upkeep on those. And we can shift those over to Eden pretty quickly, so let's just do it. It's going to take a long time to get land units over to help out. So I think it makes sense to keep producing navy in this town. And our other two towns, we can kind of transition a bit more into land units. Another thing I want to do is I'm pretty sure, not 100% confident I've got the mechanic right here, but I'm pretty sure once we get to Renaissance, uh, the cost, the faith cost of our religious buildings is going to go up. So we probably don't have time. I don't think we have time. Um, but I want to make sure we're working as many of these faith tiles as possible so that we can hopefully buy something before everything goes up in price. And I think for this turn, that's probably about it. Also considering bringing my trireme back, because although it's going to do almost no damage, uh, one thing it can do... I will go for this for now. One thing it can do is it can swoop in on Constantinople from at least three tiles away and take it on the same turn. So that's going to be pretty handy if, um, if it's doing too much damage to us. Declaration of friendship with Attila. Yeah, let's go for it. I'm not going to go to war with him anytime soon. And yeah, definitely useful to have as many allies as possible at this stage. And so, uh, I didn't realize we had a quest for that too, so that's great. We're going to get a bit of extra growth. Okay, that's pretty handy. And over here we're just going to go ahead and construct a farm, unless we go for a trading post. You can go for trading post without getting rid of the jungle tile, which is particularly helpful if you go for rationalism, but I'm fairly committed to navigation now, so let's just go for a farm. And let's bring these over. I forgot I had open borders with the Huns. Um, I'm not massively comfortable with this trireme being here, but then again, uh, it's cl clearly just transporting the missionary, so nothing to worry about there. I don't know at what point she's going to suspect something. I need iron. How does that work? This is our only unit that requires iron, I'm pretty sure, and I don't... I don't think it requires two iron. I want to check this. It might just be like a, a bit of a glitch. Yeah, it just requires the one iron, so I'm not sure what to make of that. We only have the one of those. 
Yeah, I think I'm just going to ignore that. And where is this thing going? Okay, this is actually trading with us. So as soon as we go to war with Byzantium, we're going to immediately uh, lose a bit of income. That is worth bearing in mind. But at plus 62 per turn, I think we're pretty much completely okay. And if I upgrade this guy, I don't know if he's going to continue healing, but let's try it. No, it doesn't look like it. Okay, fine. Just going to skip to the next turn, and I need to go have a look actually for my trireme, because I definitely haven't moved that in a little while. So I know there are a few spare luxury resources going at the moment, so if I'm willing to give up the gold, I could go for those, but considering we've just taken wine from Poland, we should be pretty much fine for now. Well, they're only on 5 happiness, so were we to go to war with Poland, We would be down to one happiness, and that will probably pretty soon be zero happiness once one of these towns grow. grows. So all three towns are expected to grow in about six turns, and I'm not sure we can really up the happiness before then unless we build a workboat and trade some more pearls perhaps, but no, we're actually working all the pearls. We have both cocoa. Okay, so happiness is maybe a little bit of a risk right now. A Colosseum I can build in just four turns. But in a way, I would much rather have a crossbowman, just to be safe. Or even a trebuchet. I think I should get at least one trebuchet just to help me bring down the towns that little bit faster. But it might not be quite as urgent. Or I could do it here instead. Initially, we just want to clear out the units, so we're going to go for crossbowman. And we'll probably recruit the trebuchet last. Yeah, so iron, we've got one and we've used one, so I think that was just a bit of a glitch in the last turn. Nothing to worry about. Of course, the slight risk of doing that is if we find ourselves suddenly at war with Poland again, um, then once again Istanbul is looking a little bit vulnerable, but I think that's fine. Okay, let's have a look for this trireme. I don't think it got sunk, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's still here. So I want to try and bring this back. How far is it going to have to go? Quite far. Yeah, it's about halfway across the map, which is pretty much as bad as it gets. Let's try going this way. We'll just explore for now if nothing else. We might be able to make it back, we might not. I can always recruit a new one in about two turns, but we're still a way off being able to build our own caravels, so that is pretty much what we're stuck with for now. Okay, Sistine Chapel's gone. Attila's only just entered the Renaissance era, so he's not doing too well. Now I don't know about this, if we declare friendship with her and then attack her, does that damage our reputation specifically? I'm not going to risk it. But uh, I wonder if she's starting to suspect something. Constantinople's just gone up to 29 defense. It's still one of the weaker towns on the map, or at least one of the weaker capitals. Great engineer, okay. Not sure I actually want that. The problem, of course, of getting a great engineer is uh, you end up with fewer opportunities to get great scientists. And in terms of text to steal, I'm definitely keen on education, so let's go for that. And let's see how long is it going to take. So nine turns, and in nine turns we can steal astronomy. Or I could go for acoustics, which is technically the more valuable option, but not actually that useful for our war effort. It's needed on the way to, ar to archaeology, but for navigation, we can just go straight there after astronomy. I think we probably just want to steal astronomy, even though it's less science, I guess. I don't normally do that, but I think special circumstances, it kind of calls for it. And then over here, we can recruit a cargo ship very quickly. But I think we'll go for a trip.
Okay, now I could drop this around here just for a bit of extra production. This town kind of needs it. But... I'm not sure. If I drop here, I think I get a bit less food. And also, if I'm going to be building wonders in Istanbul, that's pretty much the place we want all the production, if possible. So, I think we're going to have to go for Istanbul. Maybe this tile. And then this Gallius, let's just send it around here for now, do a bit more scouting. Okay, so that's going to be slightly awkward to attack from. I could drop a crossbowman on the gems perhaps and just try and weaken this pikeman, but that's probably not going to work that well, to be honest. Okay, so four turns till gunpowder. And then we're going to upgrade our longswordsman immediately. Not sure what's going on here. Our oh, France is at war with the... Uh, with the Huns, and nearly takes out the Great Prophet. I'm not worried about this guy. I should probably move him though. I think after this next tech, I should perhaps go for Poland's techs instead. Plus then we'll know if he's plotting against us, instead of having to rely on other civs. Okay, so the previous route we were getting 20 gold per turn, which is obviously hard to turn down. Um, and we're not going to get anything like that if we go anywhere else. But yeah, I don't think we're that far behind on text because I'm pretty sure that... It might explain it right here. I'm just going to read this just to be sure. Yeah, so it does explain it. Um, for each science we get from the trade route, the other Civ has two extra text compared to us. So in this case, we get two extra science for trading with him because he has four texts that we don't have. Um, and in the case of Byzantium, she's got five more texts than us, so we get three science per turn off her. I think we'll keep trading with Constantinople for now, because I'm pretty sure as soon as the war kicks off, our ships will come immediately back. I think that's how it works. So I think that is pretty risk-free for now, and we're going to need the money. Okay, so I think we've seen all we need to see of this little desert section. So I could attack from there too, um, because there's only so much room we can actually make use of around here. Especially advanced in Constantinople without getting shot by it, so the radius of Constantinople's fire is going to extend all the way around here. So it's really just these four or five hexes down here that are safe. So we kind of have to attack from both directions. But in this case, it's going to be kind of difficult to land to the right without being in range. I'm not sure, we'll have to have a think about that. Still, just three turns to go to gunpowder. Um, some more crossbowmen coming in. We are going to be struggling a little bit for space when we go for the attack. Unless we are willing to put ourselves in range of Constantinople. But I think first... We do want to take out the units. A research agreement, frankly, I should definitely say yes to this. Even though I want to have the money to upgrade our longswordsman ASAP. I think it makes perfect sense to be building up our relations with all the other civs as we prepare to go to war with one. Okay, so we're kind of trapped there. That's kind of bad. I don't really want to pay for open borders. Ooh, okay. An extra wonder there. So I wonder if we could have settled this. I'm kind of surprised nobody has. There's also six iron there. Um, obviously it's too late to go settling new towns, but... That would have been an interesting option in the early game if I knew about it. So at the moment, I think all of this is just a little bit far away enough that she's not going to suspect us 
of planning to go to war with her. And then Casimir, I think, is going to start stepping up the science pretty quickly. So, certainly tempting to go to war with him before he gets too advanced. I think the typical advice is once the opponents start reaching flight, that's when your naval tactics have to be kind of dialed back a bit. But there's a bit of a window between navigation and flight where you stand a pretty good chance of making a push even on a strong player like that. So I might have to consider that. As yeah, this is just such a terrible location that it's going to annoy me if this town manages to do anything at all. And in the meantime, I could go for the university. Or even the Colosseum if we're worried about happiness. I'm not sure we need to keep producing crossbowmen now. I think we've taken that about as far as we can. There's simply not enough space to do that much with them. So, a lighthouse does make sense. Only three turns. Not so good for our happiness. We do need the Colosseum. I will go for the Colosseum just to be safe. And I'm going to start bringing this thing back. It's going to take a while, but can't really see anything else worth doing with that. And then this guy is newly produced. And this guy's fully healed. Okay, so we're almost ready to go. Make sure we permanently work that tile. Not sure that 190. It's going to be enough to upgrade our long swordsmen, but we'll see. Poland spreading its religion to us too. Uh, I think we're going to go into the Renaissance era just in time to miss out on the cheap monastery. Let's confirm. Okay, so we've actually we can't build anything in here for now anyway because Poland has spread whatever religion he has. Catholicism is it? Yeah, Catholicism, um, which means we can build a mosque instead, but yeah, everything's just got a little bit more expensive, which kind of sucks. Monastery is now 220 faith per turn, not per turn, I wish it was 220 faith per turn, uh, 220 faith to build, and then Pagoda will be 300. Can't remember where we do and don't have Pagodas, but yeah, Ankara currently has no religion. So. It's a little bit questionable to take her out while she's still spreading a very useful religion to us. Oh, that's cheaper than I thought, just 70. Okay, so Janissaries are really strong. And let's see actually, how much do they cost to just buy outright? 540, so pretty expensive really. Much cheaper to just upgrade this guy instead. And then chemistry is interesting, plus one production from mines, we don't have too many mines. But manufacturing, extra production from that, and then extra production from quarries, which is really actually going to benefit Constantinople quite a lot. Stealing a new tech in five turns. Suspect that William is not going to have chemistry. We're really not that far behind on techs. So yeah, I'll probably steal astronomy and... I should probably work on chivalry myself. Yeah, I think that makes sense. And we probably should build a castle in Istanbul, just in case Poland comes for us again. Yeah, it's almost time, definitely. Let's see. Let's bring this over. Okay. So she doesn't seem to have built too many extra units in the last few turns, which is good. Trebuchet is about to come in. Another Gallius. I 
think we could be ready to go for this. Need to bring this back. This is going to do a pretty good job of taking out the pikemen, actually. If I really focus down the pikemen with my galleasses before I bring it into range of Constantinople, because we can, of course, only attack Constantinople with two of our ships at once, which is a little bit of an issue. The trebuchet is going to come out, then we'll probably build a janissary, I think. And then I think we'll just go for it. See, so yeah, she's starting to spread Eastern Orthodoxy again. Hopefully that will work, but we have to bear in mind that um, I, I'm pretty sure the way religion spreads is it's mostly based on cities. So if you've got a, an actual religious city, that's going to produce a lot of influence. So Istanbul, yeah, it's being pressured a little bit by Catholicism, but hopefully Eastern Orthodoxy will win out. Worst case scenario, um, we can just build mosques instead of pagodas and things like that. We might already have all the pagodas, to be honest. I think it's worth checking. So this town actually doesn't have a pagoda. So we really want Eastern Orthodoxy to come back to here. And then this one does, and pretty sure Ankara does too. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I think it's fine to go to war. One more Gallius. We could go for a trireme just to go for that hit on Constantinople. And also, I have to bear in mind, another thing about Barbary Corsairs is we can potentially capture opposing ships, which we're going to need some kind of melee attacker for. Okay. So she's got a trebuchet, musketman. I wonder if I just land here with my first Janissary. And then we can get another one in six turns. We're going to keep upgrading this guy. And we're going to be a little bit too short to upgrade him next turn, but that's fine. We can just use that as an opportunity to start moving him closer. She's still only got Composite Bowman, but uh, I'm sure she can upgrade to Crossbowman. Surely at this point. I'm not sure exactly when to pull the trigger. Then we'll give her a couple more turns just to spread her religion back to Istanbul. Okay, William's entered the industrial era. Maybe that means he has navigation. So maybe I should stay in his town. But it might not be navigation, it might be something else. Let's have a look. So I think he just built the Sistine Chapel. So yeah, it seems very likely, unless he's gone scientific theory, it seems very likely that he does have navigation, so we probably do just want to stay in his town. Um, and we might be able to see, in fact, as it doesn't appear to have any ships next to Amsterdam, so can't tell just yet. And then over here, I think we will just go for a Janissary. It's good to see that Poland doesn't yet have musketmen. That's useful if we do go to war with them again. This is just out of range of Constantinople, so let's do it. And then we do have open borders, but the thing is, it's the game doesn't make things that easy for you. If you declare war on someone, you have open borders with them, you will immediately be kicked out. Um, so it's more useful just to array ourselves on the kind of outskirts. She might mention it this turn though. And I... I don't want to say no. If she asks me if I'm planning to attack her, it's best just to declare immediately. Otherwise, everyone's going to hate us. So maybe I'll move this slightly further away, just in the hopes of making her not ask that question. Okay. 
Let's see. I don't think she'll ask now. We've, I think we've moved just enough away. And she's got two different missionaries right next to Istanbul, so... Hopefully she will now spread it. She's just completed a magic castle, which I think comes with gunpowder. All the more reason to take the town, definitely. Uh, Istanbul is back to being neutral, so hopefully soon it will fall to Eastern Orthodoxy. She's still got the missionaries left, but this might be the turn where she realizes what's about to happen. Because we're pretty much just going to go for it. Yeah, I mean, there's no way she's not going to see this coming. Hmm, that's kind of a problem. But no range units can hit us, so it's probably fine. I can't go here because I can get hit by the Gallius. So I might have to go here instead. We'll just move this way for now. I guess I could have moved this one up. I still can do that. No, not quite enough moving points. Okay, fine. Trebuchet is now on the front line, which is <laughs> absolutely not what I intended. I'm going to leave them there for now. And okay, so in four turns we get two Janissaries, one turn we're going to get a Trireme. I think we're ready for this. I think she'll see it coming now, I think this is going to be the trigger turn. Didn't ask the question, okay, great. And she's just managed to spread Eastern Orthodoxy back to Istanbul. I'm gonna try and hold out 300 Fey. Hopefully Catholicism won't spread here. She has got a great profit there. So hopefully that's gonna make us that little bit stronger on Eastern Orthodoxy. Pagodas, I mean, mosques are good for generating extra faith. They're probably the second best religious building. Unless you're going for like a, a cultural victory, in which case you want cathedrals, but... Yeah, I think over here it's time to start focusing on other things. So I'm going to get some walls just in case. This is a little bit easy to attack. It is on a hill, which is going to make it slightly tougher, but can't be too complacent with that. I think we do need to make sure we're nice and ready someone to attack it just in case. Okay, musketman on the sea there. If we can attack him before he lands we can do a lot of damage but that's probably not gonna work. She'll surely see it coming now. It's incredibly obvious what's about to happen. Okay. 
think that'll do. Let's go for it. Surely it's about to kick off now. She'd be incredibly stupid not to see it coming at this point. We turned down her declaration of friendship. I'll take his money. I could ask him to declare on her too, which is going to make it that a little bit easier, but I, I don't really think I need his help, and I don't really want him to take her town off her. You know what, I don't want to give him open borders. Screw him. He's next, maybe. I could also go for France next, with what's left of my forces. But yeah, Catholicism's still spreading. Here we go, I think her turn is... yeah, here we go. Is she gonna see it coming? There we go. At least you're honest, but that may be your only good trait. They're surprisingly gracious, actually. The problem with that is she now gets the first round of attacks on us. Which does kinda suck, and yeah, the trebuchet didn't take that too well. Now why is Bogota in war of us? Our scientists are... is that the reason? Oh, uh, we've... yeah, we've got the most text, but that doesn't actually mean we're producing the most science, so... Nothing to get immediately excited about, unfortunately. This is safe. Actually, there is a knight there, and that's gonna... That's gonna do some damage. Yeah, that knight could do some real damage. Okay, let's see, what can we do? So I think we want to take down the ships. Hang on a minute. B. B for ranged attack. I've been pressing A, I hope that's not skipping turns. Maybe A for attack. So I could move the Janissary in here. It could go for the the hill, the coveted hill tile that we never got. Is he going to be at risk? I think he can take the hit from there. Um, he's not going to be attacked by Constantinople. Ah, uh, this crossbowman has some experience. I don't, I don't know if the sea counts as open terrain. It it probably shouldn't, but. We can at least finish off that first ship. And then we can potentially attack the pikemen from across the river. Can the knight reach us from here? He has to go through the forest. So hopefully that would be enough. Still a bit worried for the treb. might pull him back. Now let's just risk him. We're inevitably going to take a few losses. Doesn't really matter that much if the trap goes down there. No, um, no slower to produce than the usual crossbowman anyway. couple more Janissaries coming very soon. Constantinople has leapt up though, now 36 defense. Um, whereas before it was like 29, I think it was 29 at the start of the part, or even 28. Janissary is only 24, so at one point the Janissaries were comparable in their strength to Constantinople, but now they're significantly weaker, so one more reason to probably try and keep the treble alive, but that's not going to happen. Killed in action? Crap. Okay, I'm going to have to research astronomy myself, because I really need him. I see, it says right there that he's died. An enemy unit has been spotted in our territory. I'm, I'm more than happy for her to keep spreading her religion here. 
Let's see, we're down to plus 32 gold per turn, and actually, okay, I was wrong about the cargo ships. We've we've lost our cargo ship as a result of going to war with her. At least now I know that. Hopefully I won't forget. Let's see what she does. She can't do that much damage. I don't think she'll get more than one or two kills here. I just want to take out that knight, and wherever the musketman went... Okay. We're not going to go for him anymore. We're going to go for Casimir. She, of course, is going to start producing her own military units, but I don't think she can do it that quickly, as uh, she is going to focus down the treb, and it looks like the knights could reach us, so they're going to get the kill. That sucks. But that's okay. Um, we've got enough crossbowmen that we can probably just take the city either way. Let's see. Not too many units showing up. This is technically safe, if there are no knights. There is a pikeman. I think I'll go for that though. And then this guy gets a damage bonus when he attacks. That's one of the good things about Genesaries. The other thing being that they heal up, they get half their health back, as soon as they get a kill. Uh, this crossbowman unfortunately can't do much from this tile. Uh, if I try to land this crossbowman, he's going to get attacked by Constantinople. I think I'll still go for this attack. And then I will risk moving this to here. As we can see, some musketmen over there that we can hopefully shoot down. So there's not actually that much I can do with my galleuses, so I've maybe gone a bit too much into that. Um, and I'm actually not going to shoot the missionary. I'm perfectly happy for the missionary to be there. So I think next turn we can maybe take the galleus, but only if we get it to like a perfect amount of health where we can actually finish it off. But as you can see, um, that is not a fight that we should be taking under normal circumstances. The thing is we do have the uh, the price ships promotion and I don't know how likely that is to kick in but it's worth a go potentially. Another thing I could do is I could move my Gallius in and take a shot but it doesn't make sense to do so because right now no one's in range of Constantinople and we want things to stay that way. And I think our workers have finally pretty much run out of things to do, so... Oh, actually, there's a sawmill here we can put down. And then one thing we can do is we can send our workers up to repair some of the tiles we pillage. Okay, let's go up to here. And I think that's pretty much fine. I don't think she has enough military to do any real damage to us. The pikemen are probably going to attack the crossbowmen, which is going to do quite a lot of damage, but... After that, we should be fine. Okay. Considerably less painful than expected. And we've got a promotion on these if we want. Uh, pikemen have actually moved away. It might be time now to actually make a move on the town itself. So I think that's actually going to leave it with a bit too much help, uh, a bit too much health for the trireme to capture it. As is that. OK, 
Okay, so she got another Gallius in the town itself, so that's going to make it quite strong on defence. Okay. We need to make our move, so let's just do it. This is where we start to take pretty heavy losses, I think. Can't attack the town from here. Okay. We're going to have to go up to here. Hopefully there's nothing there that can attack us, although the Gallius will. We are going to take quite a few losses here. It's it's on flat land, which makes it easier to take, but then there's quite a bit around it that's hard to traverse. Which is good when we have it. So yeah, I'm not sure we're ready to actually attack the place itself. Let's do this. And let's keep weakening these. Okay, so Tririum's probably not going to get involved, but that's fine. Janissary... I think should probably attempt to land where that pikeman currently is. And then we are going to need a few more units. I will attack that. Not sure what that's even doing there. Oh, there's some fish here, so it's trying to go all the way around, but it's it's chosen a very bad moment to do that. Uh, university only takes four turns. I should probably do that, to be honest. To get the stable, that's going to give us extra production on the horses. But I think that's about it. And uh, the cattle as well, so that's plus two production. And we're not going to be building any mounted units, so that's not actually that helpful. Alternatively, we can produce trebuchets in just three turns, but I think Lighthouse makes sense, actually. And then over here, we're going to keep producing Janissaries, because I think they're going to prove to be pretty solid. And I think with this guy, we'll just heal him up. Yeah, it's a bit of a shame for the Galliuses. We we can't even use them much to actually shoot at him. I could try and send one round, all the way around, um, which is going to take, you know, potentially anything up to 10 turns, which is probably too much. Yeah, I don't think we'll do that. I'm not actually completely confident we have enough. So, perhaps I should be producing more units in Istanbul. Yeah, I'm going to play it safe. It's always worth playing it safe. Let's get a treb. Until you actually win the war, you might as well just keep producing units. It usually works. Okay, we're now having Buddhism spread to us. Which I can't imagine is going to be too helpful, considering that Eastern Orthodoxy swallowed up three different religious buildings in its beliefs. So yeah, there's still a massive religious war going on, a peaceful religious war, but still. Okay, let's see, how well are we going to take this? If we lose just one unit per turn, that's honestly probably acceptable. But yeah, we're going to need more than what we currently have. Hopefully the Janissaries will be able to take these guys on. They're surely not going to get the kill immediately, so I can pillage the tile and I can immediately heal up, which I think does make sense. Ok, 
Okay, let's see. Is it time to start attacking the town itself? I think it probably is. Okay, this guy, we're going to heal him up immediately, we're going to pillage the tile, and we still have enough movement to finish one of these guys off. I don't want to open things up for the musketmen to start attacking our crossbowmen. That's the thing, so... Probably makes sense that we attack this way, just to block them off. And then we'll hit these guys from across here. What the? Oh, I press V. Which is apparently the hotkey for that. Okay, let's see. So I think we want to move these up. Ah, that's the whole move. I don't know why. Did I do something with... I don't think I did something with them. I might be missing something there. Can shoot these with the crossbowmen. But... Let's see, can I do it with these instead? Yes, I can. Okay, let's take those out with these. And then Janissaries, we're going to drop up there. These two are just going to go for the town. I'm not sure we're going to do enough damage, to be honest. Well, we're slowly weakening it. Nothing really to do with this guy. Uh, he's we pretty much upgraded all the tiles we can, with the exception of the desert, which I guess we can just drop a trading post there or something. No reason not to. Then these guys just need to come in. Yeah, I'm still not sure we have enough actually. The thing is, the musketmen are going to have to attack the Janissaries, and unless literally everything attacks the Janissaries, they're probably not going to take it down this turn. This is where I'd really like a Treb. A Treb would make a difference. No, I'm not going to attack that. Got to resist. So there's some musketmen up there. They're going to come towards us. We're going to try and fight them off with the Janissary. And yeah, I think it does make sense to keep producing units until we absolutely nail this down. And then I could heal this up, because they might focus it down. But I think I won't. Okay, let's see what happens. So we've probably taken about a fifth of its health. And we've lost maybe two or three units. So at this rate, it kind of depends what she does with the rest of her units. We've got this Gallius here, which is annoyingly going to weaken our crossbowmen here quite a lot. And there's no real other way we can attack from there. And yeah, it got... Immediately got a lot of that health back. And this crossbowman is going to get taken out very quickly. I think we do need more trebs. Because we're ready to take it as soon as the health drops. On the upside, at least she's not attacking our Galeuses. And yeah, let's send some production to Eden. I think it needs it. So this seems to be where scouts go to die. Okay. Let's see. Let's keep attacking it. I should have actually maybe taken the Great Engineer, but never mind. Yeah, so we're pretty limited in the damage we can do, really, unless we start attacking it with the Janissaries, which... We could.
I think this guy I might go for the attack on the musketmen because we do get that offense bonus. Yeah, I think I will do that. And then the other two, we're going to go for the town. And we are going to need more units, definitely. But certainly weakening it. It's kind of annoying that the AI... It's almost like the AI knows that there's no point taking out the Galliuses because we'll just send more in. Which, yeah, we've got a lot of firepower here that's just not being used. Oh, there's a river there. That's really hard to see, but that explains why every time I move a unit over here, it seems to suddenly lose all its movement points. That is how it has to be, unfortunately. Don't really have a choice. I could just disrupt trade I guess. Is that actually going through our town? Yeah so she's still got trade going through our town which we're somehow not able to pillage. Let's go and make sure we do that. Okay so I am tempted to just keep producing units. Maybe a treb. But I think I will go for a cargo ship because income is a little bit of a problem. And yeah, there's not really anything this can do. Okay, so she's up here she's got another Gallius, so that's going to bomb us. And then a Composite Bowman's probably going to step onto the shore. Hopefully we can knock that out pretty quickly with the Janissary. It's okay, I'm hoping the Janissaries are going to be just tough enough to survive the onslaught here. Nope, dead. I think these crossbowmen are dead too. So yeah, it's pretty tough to take this down actually. We've got a great general which helps. This unit does actually just about survive. Yeah, I think we need more Janissaries and we need Trebs. We get a new policy, so I think I do want the happiness of naval tradition, but plus three production in all cities right now is going to help the war effort, so let's go for that. And Trebuchet and Janissary cost the same number of turns to produce, so obviously we're going to go for Janissary in that case. And this guy, Leonidas, let's bring him over as soon as we can. And the Treb is going to take a little bit longer. Let's pillage this. So up to 548, which is enough to get a Treb, or enough to get another Janissary. I think we'll go for the Janissary, because there are still a few units to clear out, and ultimately it's probably the Janissaries that are going to take the town. I don't think we're doing enough damage. So we've got some musketmen here that are about to attack us unless we take a step off, but then we can't shoot. So it's a choice between... Hmm. We're going to lose this unit either way, probably. Yeah, I actually might not have enough. I think I've gone too heavy on the navy. I was expecting there to be a lot more units in this area, that's the thing. I thought there'd be a bit of a fight with the units here. And the fact there hasn't been means that we've got quite a bit of redundant naval firepower. And I'm starting to wonder if it's not too late to do this. I think I'll go for it, honestly. Because we still have like plenty of backup if we need it from the Galliuses. Yeah, this guy can attack the city. Need to bring these up to here. 
And then this guy absolutely needs to pillage. Then he can also attack the city, or he can go for the musketman. He's pretty likely to get killed in this next turn. This definitely will. So it could go out and blaze of glory, attack Constantinople, or it could just take a step away. Depends how much damage it's going to do, so it's it's going to take a little bit. But yeah, that's gone up all the way to 44 defense now, so it just seems to be getting stronger and stronger at the most inopportune time. I'm starting to wonder about moving this along too. I could swap places, but what's the point? We want to have these melee units as close to the town as possible. And I don't normally like to attack towns with melee units, but in this case, we do need to get that health down as soon as we can. I think I am going to go for this. And then that probably just costs a bit too much health. I don't think they'll wipe out both our Janissaries in one turn, but we can't pillage right now. But I could shift this guy around instead. Then we can pillage, and we don't have to lose the health from attacking the town. And yeah, that's a dead end, so looks like a lot of scouts have been up here trying to find something, and they can at least embark across the oceans, whereas my trireme is pretty much completely stuck. I'm just gonna scout this, this doesn't really reveal anything, okay. Hopefully the composite bowmen will do almost no damage to the Janissaries. Okay, so three turns till we get Janissary there, four turns till we get one there, and then we've got one in the town that we can shift across to this tile. But we do need trebs. I think we really do. So I should maybe have gone for one of them. It's not too late to go for it in Istanbul, but the thing is... A Janissary, obviously, it's 150 production, and if we can get it in the same number of turns, it makes perfect sense to go for it. Yeah, I think I think that can still be justified, honestly. We are slowly taking the town down. And I think this guy, he could attack this. Just for that attack bonus. But I think we'll get a bit of health back instead. go for a farm or a trading post? I think we'll go for a farm. It's our main city, so might as well. Let's see. So I think we just don't have enough crossbowmen able to attack it right now. Oh dear. That's what I get for spying on him, I guess. Uh, I'm not really ready for this. And he's attacking this town, which... I'm glad I built the walls, but we're not ready for that. Yeah, he's got a lot there too. He's got frigates. Yeah, we're gonna lose Ankara. Looks like we've lost them too. Those are still composite bows, so they don't do as much damage as they could, and that I assume is an ally of the Netherlands. Things have just taken a major turn for the worse. That's really not good. Let's see, who can you shoot? Okay, that doesn't make a difference. Promote a unit. These guys, they don't need any extra health. But we'll get bombardment. Yeah, we're not taking this down quick enough.
Can't really give up though. We're very close. I could even keep the treb around here just to help take down the Dutch. The problem is those frigates are just gonna absolutely destroy our town. And I think this unit is screwed. Yeah, the frigates are going to weaken it so quickly that there's just nothing we can do. Didn't expect that to happen. Really didn't. I knew that the Netherlands is not as peaceful, um, or, or are not as peaceful as they sometimes look. She's now got frigates too. So they're going to do a lot of damage to us. Uh, if I move the Janissaries up towards Constantinople, then the Musketmen get a free hit on our crossbowmen. So maybe I won't. On the other hand, we need to keep the units around that can actually take the town. Because there's still a chance we could get it next turn. And that's got to be worth a crossbowman dying, I think. Now I do have, of course, a couple of free Galliuses I can bring round to Ankara. And then Edirne is going to get attacked too. Captured a great prophet, that's good. So I can use that to actually spread religion to my own towns, which is what I want right now. But yeah, pretty worried about Ankara. One risk is they could actually just raise the town. They might not because they might want the cocoa. Could Poland declare on me too? There is a Gallius there, there's a Knight there. Doesn't appear to have many frigates yet. Tempted to just keep this Trevor around. I think that does make sense. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna lose an okay town, and I think we're gonna gain a good town. But then the war with the Netherlands is still gonna be going on after that. So we're still gonna have some pretty major problems to deal with. And we might lose our last trade route, I think. But yeah, Ankara, I think, is just completely doomed. And there's nothing we can recruit in fewer than three turns, so it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty doomed. I could just work on something like research instead for now, I guess. Or even wealth. We need money. There's a slim chance Ankara survives, but I think with that number of frigates surrounding us, it's probably a goner. 
especially with all the upgrades they'll have, which might make a difference to attacking us from the sea. Do a bit of extra damage. Let's see how much they take out. I think they're going to take a big chunk. Not quite as much as I thought. Depends if they bring more in. Might survive one more turn, but I think we definitely can't save it. Yeah, okay. There are some swordsmen coming in too. What I'm hoping is as soon as we take Constantinople, she'll accept peace. Don't know if she will, but I think we have to go for that. Trireme finally goes down. It's done its job, definitely. It's a bit less upkeep too, not that we pay much upkeep on ships as this Civ. Panama City has declared war on us. Uh, Sydney's declared war on us too, I didn't realise that. There's actually a settler coming through. Let's just kill what we can. And this Trev probably has to fall back to Istanbul. Okay, let's see what we can do here. So, we can't pillage. Not sure we can do enough damage. No, we can't. That's really quite bad. I wonder if I can bait them into attacking the crossbowmen if I just put them in the sea, it's going to make them much weaker to the attack. Because I'm not sure we need to be fighting this trebuchet really. Yeah, we're not doing enough. And if this Janissary goes down next turn, which it probably will, because she's probably going to focus it down, that could be it. I'm going to try and bait her, although we kind of need these to help defend Edern too. I think I have to try and bait her though. Great General, I guess, could maybe help next turn, just... But yeah, I think the thing is the Janissaries might go down, which... We could still attack the town with the Trireme, but um, that requires us to not use at least one of our Galliuses, and we kind of need those to weaken it. It's going to get another chunk of health back any moment now. Hopefully not too much health. So there's two things to worry about. A, how much health is it going to get back? And B, will the Janissaries survive? They're fortified, which I'm hoping is going to be enough. But yeah, that's a goner. Doesn't look like he's raising it though, so that's some good news. And they've gone after the crossbowmen, which is fine. We do sacrifice that crossbowman, but Janissaries look like they're going to survive. Bit of a mixed bag, we really need to pull this off though. Okay, firstly we're going to send the Great General up, that's going to give us about 15% damage bonus. Let's see. 
It's going to be really tight. We're going to be quite lucky to get away with this if we do. I'm not sure we will. At least we got a second Janissary though, and yeah, it looks like we actually can, so... That was a very close call. I guess we just need this as a defender. So the game is certainly suggesting this is going to be enough. There we go, we got it. Good. So I'm hoping she'll immediately accept peace. Uh, for now we're just going to puppet it. I guess that's a bit of extra gold too, which is nice. Let's see about this. Time's come to put down our arms. Excellent. I want to see as well if I can get away taking some money from her. Good news is Ankara's not being raised, so when we take it back... We actually get a liberation bonus too. So yeah, I think that's all good. So Constantinople, let's have a look at it. It's a really good city to have. Clearly better than An Ankara, um, and clearly needed. So the wonders, it's got Chichen Itza, Temple of Artemis, and Hanging Gardens. So that's actually a bit worse than I thought. I thought this was the town with Himeji Castle and a couple of other things, but still, it's got good growth, it's got good range unit production, and a, at least a little bit of happiness. No Notre Dame though, and it's, uh, it's very easy to attack to be honest. But yeah, we obviously have to accept peace because the Dutch are going to do too much damage to us otherwise. So for some reason we're getting almost no faith, what's going on with that? Plus two faith, but we're clearly working these... Oh, of course, the religion is gone. Okay, so um, I think we want to spread that again. Let's start here. I could have dropped a... No, I don't think you can drop a holy site with a captured prophet, so that's fine. Okay, let's bring these round. And I've got a spy that I should have been using. And since the Netherlands is already attacking us, we could just go and spy on them. Again. But, could lead to him being killed. And he's a, he's a low-ranked spy, so it's going to take him some time to actually improve. I do want to keep an eye on Warsaw, because I also want to know if he's plotting against me. And I want to know how much do these guys hate me now. So early concerns about warmongering, they don't seem too bothered. They don't seem too bothered. Napoleon hasn't even mentioned it. The fact that these two haven't even mentioned it suggests to me that both of them are deceitful. Same with Attila, but that's pretty much always the case. And then William. It might be that my spies were the mistake. <laughs> that might be the reason he's decided to attack us, which kind of sucks. Uh, I refuse to move my troops away from their borders when they asked, but at least I was honest, so they don't care too much. Would he accept peace? I'm guessing not. Obviously I want to take my town back first. But yeah, we're going to need some money from Byzantium. I really wanted a few more wonders, I thought we'd get a few more than that. Uh, let's have a look. So if we ask her, we're losing money now, she's losing money too. If we ask her for all the money she has, she's happy with that. No she's not. I'm going to have to try it. Okay, don't think she's going to pay us. Yeah, okay. What about one gold? Surely she can spare one gold. No, literally, it's peace or nothing. And yeah, we're going to have to go and accept that. Okay, so we're safe from her for at least 10 turns. Um, this town has both the gems. And it has two quarries. It's got... Quite a few horses that we can probably trade. 
Wonder if we can get some immediate money from that. Not sure who we still have an active declaration of friendship with. Let's have a look. Can't remember how to find that out. My relationship, surely this would say. It might be that I just don't have active friendship with anyone now. But I, I know at some point I was friendly with the Netherlands. Obviously they were deceitful. This guy I think I was friendly with too. And I've got a research agreement with Attila. Which suggests we're at least friends with him in theory. Okay, he's willing to pay me for that. Fair bit. I'll try seven. I think there is technically a way you can do this where you like trade one horse at a time and just have like five separate deals on the go, but that's a bit lame. Also just takes too long. I could pause the recording, but... Okay, let's try someone else. Attila might want them. I don't need to give away all my horses, but I can probably spare a couple. There we go, that works. I think I could have just asked him for money straight up, but it'll come through eventually. Obviously, more useful to have the money immediately, but that's okay. And then this city... We need to buy a courthouse at some point. I can't remember exactly how Unrest works. It's been quite a while since I've actually played this game. So it's in resistance for 11 turns. So I think until it the resistance ends, we pretty much just don't want to do anything in that town. And then I'm just hoping that Byzantium isn't intending to go to war with us again anytime soon. Uh, I'm pretty tempted to see if I can pay this guy to attack what she has left. We know he's deceitful, so just ignore anything friendly he says. He will kill us. Doesn't see a way to make that work. I still think he's the strongest player on the map, so that's a little bit disappointing. Okay. So, Trireme, let's just keep it where it is for now. Help block off your den. There are going to be quite a few units coming through here. Um, Obviously, Poland has given the Netherlands open borders, which is kind of annoying, but I don't think there's anything I can do about that. Janissaries did well though, so I'm glad we got some opportunity to show off what they can do. Okay. The main forces have now arrived, and she's denounced us, but hopefully won't declare war on us. I'm kind of done with her now. She can still keep spreading her religion too, if she wants. Okay, so they've not been able to do any immediate damage. They're sea beggars, so they're the melee attackers. Looks like he's going to go fully thrist and bull instead of Edern. I think the AI doesn't tend to attack two towns at once. It usually picks a town and goes all out. We clearly want more military units here, and we probably want a castle here, but we do need to get things like a university eventually to to kind of get things going with our science, because I feel like we could potentially overtake some of the other players here if we really step it up. Um, we are unhappy though. Have I just... no, I haven't just grown, so maybe the unhappiness came from Constantinople, I'm not really sure. That's a bit of a problem. I think a cargo ship would make sense, but we have to be able to keep it safe from the Dutch. And this is kind of the best time of the game to attack if you're the Dutch, because they do get the Sea Beggar, which I think is especially good at attacking towns from what I remember. Either that or it steals gold when it attacks towns, um, but it's a problem for us. Let's see, what can we find out about this? So he's still establishing surveillance, that's going to be three turns. You need to be a bit careful because obviously I don't want to rile Poland up. Definitely don't want to war with them right now. There's a good argument for a castle. Because if Poland attacks us, they're going to go straight for this too. But on the other hand, we do need something that's going to help us get Ankara back. It's going to be a bit weak when we get it back, but still. It's got crossbowmen and swordsmen coming in. So we can attack the Swordsman immediately with our Janissary, and you can see that's going to do a lot of damage. Plus we're out of range of Ankara. Although I don't think it can actually attack while it's in resistance anyway. 
So yeah, we're not too worried about that. Yeah, let's bring the Galliuses back. It could get attacked, and that could be kind of bad. In theory, I can steal the seal uh, the sea beggars if I get a caravel. Because the trireme is just not going to do enough damage. It does do a bit of a chunk. Capture chance, 26%. I would like some of those. I'm not sure we can really pull it off, but let's move in that direction. And then let's send these over the sea to do some repairs around Constantinople. So, okay, so we've pillaged both of the gems, so that's an easy way to get some happiness. If we can just repair one of those. And then I do need to leave some kind of defense here. Genissaries are going to be most useful on defense, but could use them to help take Ankara. Hang on a minute. I didn't even realize there's a sea beggar there too. So unless they're actually avoiding Istanbul and this is their chosen route to get to Edirne, which would be a perfect, perfect case of the AI being extremely stupid. That's the ideal situation though. So this might be their first attempt to attack Edirne, in which case we're going to want some more defense here. We're going to want a castle and... We're going to want to bring back our crossbows. And the Janissaries are probably best off... Well, we could go the land way, it just takes such a long time. Not too long though, because we can just immediately hop from one jungle to the other, so it could be worse. Let's go for it. And then Great Prophet, we've already got Eastern Orthodoxy here, which is good, and... That should help us. Well, we're currently blockaded, I guess, by that one ship, um, but that should help us. Hmm. I should have attacked this, obviously, if I knew it was there. Completely. Had a complete blind spot there. That's annoying, though, because we're not getting much faith right now. More useful to go for the Sea Beggars. And I think I'm just going to move this Janissary to be somewhere vaguely near Byzantium in case they come for us. Um, because it's just going to take too long to bring it back to Istanbul. And then we can produce something in Istanbul. Obviously we should go for something that's going to help us defend, so castle's only four turns. We do currently have a treb to help us defend from within the town. Crossbowman's only three turns, but we're currently losing a lot of money. So probably want to go for something that's not going to cost us extra upkeep. And... The Gallius, although we pay almost no upkeep on those, um, they're pretty much outmoded now, so I think a castle does make sense. Or we could go for the shrine for a bit of extra faith, but we also need money. We're losing money pretty quick, and a market might make sense. I'm going to go for the castle because I just think we need to absolutely make sure we stay safe from the Dutch. We don't know everything they're going to throw at us. Okay, she's offering us lots of iron for the pearls, which is definitely worth it. We're going to need those to build frigates. Gives us seven, so that's perfect. That's going to be a full navy. And let's see, so I'm not worried about the swordsman. Uh, the crossbowman is also going to be pretty much fine. The, other, the only question is how much is going to come through here. It's in resistance for another three turns, then it can start attacking us back. We can probably take it fairly easily though, it has to rebuild its walls. It's going to be kind of a tough fight, but if we focus everything on it we should be fine. As uh, they are actually going to go for Istanbul, okay. So, not perfect in that case. We are going to have some trouble defending this, as yeah, they do a lot of damage actually. Okay, I kind of need her money, but she's not making any money, so we'll just accept the embassy. Okay, so we can see the text here, we're seven texts behind William, and four texts behind Poland, five texts behind 
Theodora, so it could be worse. And realistically, this guy is not going to steal navigation before we can research it ourselves, I think. So we're just going to have to go for it. It's going to take a long time. We're really far behind on the Navy now. But we kind of had to do that in order to get Janissaries and make our push for Byzantium. So I think we're just kind of stuck playing defensive for a little while. But this is going to be kind of tough to fight off. Let's see. Could try and capture this with the trireme. We have to do just the right amount of damage. Swordsman coming along. Settler there we could steal if we want to. Which honestly, why not? And then we can hit this, take it out. I think that makes perfect sense. So we've got rid of that, but there's a frigate in the town which could do some damage to us, so we probably have to withdraw pretty quickly after this. Um, the crossbowman could in theory attack us, but the AI pretty much never attacks and moves on the same turn. This sea beggar's pretty weak. Let's see what we can do with these first. Okay, so it's going to do a fair amount. Let's have a go. This doesn't get the kill, which it doesn't. I think we might just be able to have a go at capturing it. It's kind of borderline. This will kill it off, so we can't do that. Just gotta risk it, I think. Should be enough, yeah. Decisive victory, apparently. 26% um, chance to capture. Odds are very much against us, but we do actually capture it, so that's really great. And that's the only way we were gonna get a sea beggar in this game. And that's actually potentially gonna help us capture other ones. So that's very useful to have. And let's just try and wipe this thing out, which we can. So, just the two ships left. They're not going to be able to take us down alone. And this guy is going to go and do some repairs. Let's focus firstly on the gems. And let's just have this guy heal himself up. And put this guy in the town for a bit of extra defense. And start bringing Leonidas over in this direction. See, we're not at war with Kabul, which is good. So they're not going to start attacking us with their galleasses and things. Do want to get my faith back though, so I really want to bring down this sea beggar. Um, don't think the trireme can quite reach him. Makes sense actually if we just put the crossbowman in the town as its defender, and then end the turn. As uh, someone has eventually settled the uh, the desert, should have no growth there, but they'll manage it somehow. Vatican City has declared war on us. That's okay. So yeah, Janissary is going to get hit here, but they've not got enough forces to take Istanbul, and we might be able to capture another one of their ships if we're really lucky. So yeah, frigate does a big chunk. See, if he just about survives, we should be able to pull him away and rescue him. So yeah, they've moved in a few more. But, I think that's okay. Istanbul, we need to try and bring back to Eastern Orthodoxy. Fortunately, I think if Theodora is still alive, she doesn't have the Holy City anymore, but hopefully she'll still try and spread her religion to us. And the Janissaries, I don't think it should be necessary to heal up here. Let's see what we can do, so I think that leaves it with a bit too much health. 
if we go for the attack with this, that's going to do how much? 50% chance of capture, so that's great. And yeah, that is going to do enough damage, so let's attack it with Istanbul. Although actually... Hmm. Need to make sure we can use our Galliuses properly. Okay, so I'm just going to pull back with this guy for now, and... have him defend himself. This guy's moved into range, that's perfect. Can easily bring him down. Could try and capture him if we can bring this back, can we? Yes, we can. 26% chance of capture. Let's see, how much damage are we going to do? An okay amount, but just to be absolutely safe, I'm going to attack it with this instead. Oh, it's actually gone. I didn't think it would destroy it. Okay, never mind. If I can finesse this, I might be able to try and capture this with the trireme instead, and then use the sea beggar to get the other sea beggar. I'm not sure we can. Let's see, so normally we're going to do that amount of damage, which is not quite enough. But if we bring this in. Try it like this. Don't know what happened there. I thought I had another ship in here that it was going to swap with. Unless it's gone all the way over there, or. Kind of confused by that. Not sure what just happened. Okay, so. Can do a nice amount to this. This is the one that we can upgrade. I think I just have to go for it because I, I can't quite work it out. A bit of extra power on this would be enough to actually bring it down, which is not what we want, but... Sea Beggar is going to do a good chunk to it, and then we can just try and get this one. With the Trireme. Let's have a go. 50% chance of capture. Hopefully we'll do it. I can now see that, which suggests I might have caught it. Yeah, got it. Excellent. Okay, so this is um, this is what the Ottomans do best. This is going pretty well so far. Need to check the trireme can actually do enough damage wherever it is. They can't both be in here. I'm not sure where it's gone. I cannot see my trireme. I'm really confused. So I'm sure they can't both be in here. But whatever. Let's just go for it. that's going to kill it, which is not necessarily what we want if we do have a trireme in here, which I thought we did. Let's see, so we can promote this guy, um, but they're going to do just the right amount of damage, so I think actually I want bombardment, and I want to hit them with this. Send this over to do some repairs, and let's just bring these over towards where the actual war is, put these guys on alert, and we definitely want to keep at least one Janissary around Constantinople just in case she does come and attack it because it's not going to be ready to defend itself anytime soon. I'm hoping she won't immediately try and go to war with us, but obviously she does hate us enough that she could do it, so we'll see. Just need to know where that trireme's gone, that's the thing. Okay, so I'm going to try doing nothing with this. 
And then the trireme does suddenly appear, and it is in that spot. And we've got a 26% chance of capture. I could wait until next turn, but I think what's going to happen is they'll probably just stupidly attack Istanbul and get themselves sunk. So this is the only way we can potentially capture it. Um, although, actually, looks like I can't go for the attack. Yeah, it's actually not possible for me to go for the attack, so... Knowing that, I guess we might as well just use it for some experience, but... Very useful to have a couple of Sea Beggars. We can use them to build an even bigger fort. So if we swing round and attack the Dutch, which is going to require open borders from the Polish... But I don't see why they'd say no. Apart from the fact we can't pay them, which is admittedly a bit of an issue. Okay, so we've got some choices, but we definitely need to try and get Ankara back. I'm sure we can do it, but um, the risk, of course, is we can't leave Constantinople open to attack from Byzantium because we don't really have the ability to defend both places at once. So, yeah, we're going to handle all that stuff in the next part, so it should be interesting. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.